Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News, a special Wednesday edition. That's right, we're now going to have Prime News Monday through Friday, releasing at 5 p.m. CT. Although this episode is going to come later because it's not even being recorded until closer to 5 p.m. CT. Uh, just because there's been a lot of logistics to get set up to make Prime News back into a daily show. As a daily show, we now will be covering content from tech. We'll be covering content from Sony, from Microsoft, from PC. If there's interesting stuff going on in the mobile space, that's right, we're expanding beyond just Nintendo for these daily episodes. We also will be covering more than just Nintendo in general at the channel. Don't worry, Nintendo's not forgotten. We still have the Nintendo Prime podcast. We still have um, a lot of Nintendo-focused content in the works, editorials, and all that stuff. Don't worry, my love of Nintendo hasn't gone anywhere. Hello, Legend of Zelda hat. But uh, we do have a lot to talk about today, so let's just get into the stories before this episode drags on way longer than I want it to be. Initial recording was over 45 minutes. <laughs> So first story today deals with Fortnite. There was an update released for Fortnite this week, and it turns out that update changes how the player pools work in the game. For those who don't know, uh, Fortnite has full cross-play ability across all platforms, but they changed how the player pools work when you are just playing by yourself. So if you are on Nintendo Switch or mobile devices, you will be playing together. Those player pools have been combined. That means Switch is being taken out of the player pool it was in with PlayStation 4 and Xbox. That means PlayStation 4 and Xbox Xbox are now grouped together and mobile and switch are grouped together so that's an interesting change uh, it does give switch users a massive advantage over mobile users because touch controls versus controllers you can use controls with mobile devices some mobile devices do run at 60 fps blah, blah 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 epic's explanation is basically that they feel like this makes a more even playing ground for switch owners because nintendo switch owners have been at a disadvantage playing against xbox and playstation people because well they have higher frame rates which is leading to them able to fire weapons more rapidly which is leading to them having an advantage in head-to-head -head matchups so yeah they just tried to make things more balanced and now mobile users are getting kind of screwed but whatever you can still partner up with people on playstation 4 and xbox and pc for that matter uh and end up in those player pools if you're doing groups but if you're playing by yourself you're going to be you know in those respective player pools so xbox and playstation together switch and mobile together pc on its own the media create sales are in for this past week in Japan, so let's just jump right into those numbers because it's very interesting. So the first numbers we have are for Devil May Cry 5, who chimed into the number one spot on the software charts for the PlayStation 4 with 116,202 units. Then that was followed up by Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Super Mario Bros. Use Deluxe, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn, which also debuted on 3DS last week, chimes in at the number six spot, moving 10,607 units. Now when we get to the hardware, Nintendo Switch has moved 69,766 units and is the number one selling hardware for god knows what is it like 60 weeks in a row it's been a hell of a long time uh and that's way ahead of last year's pace as well playstation 4 also saw a massive increase this week it is at the number two spot and it moved 32,362 units that in last week they only moved 19,000 so that is a 13,000 unit increase for playstation 4 3ds was bringing up the rear there with 5,000 Vita was behind it with three and nobody really cares about xbox because it just doesn't sell in japan so that's some really interesting data, and uh, yeah, I mean, Switch is still killing it. PlayStation is still killing it. Switch is about 300,000 or so away from passing PlayStation 4. Uh, next up after that, I guess we'll be passing 3DS. So this story is a weird one. Uh, it's weird not that it happened, but weird in what I'm going to say about it. So Ninja... Blevins. He is the creator with 13 million, uh, you know, followers on Twitch, 22 million or so on YouTube, another, you know, 10 million or so on Twitter. He is the massive Fortnite YouTuber that blew up over the last couple of years. Uh, he's been doing professional gaming for a long time. He used to be like a, a professional Halo player, all this stuff. He's actually really, really good at the games he plays. As I said, he was a professional um, gamer, like he played in tournaments and all that. Well, he was paid According to Reuters, a, a place that is pretty accurate when it comes to this kind of information, up to $1 million to stream Apex Legends on launch day by EA. And not only that, to also advertise the game on his Twitter. Now, personally, I don't have any issue with this. A lot of content creators take sponsorships. I did it for Fairy Fencer F, actually, and I still haven't been paid for it. I should really get a hold of them about that. Uh, so I've done a sponsored stream before, so I don't have an issue with sponsored streams being a thing that happens. But I do have an issue that it, he didn't disclose it very well. He talked about it a couple times during the stream that this was brought to you by EA, but it really wasn't blatantly obvious. Like, if you just come by the stream for a few minutes, you might have no 
idea that he's playing Apex Legends, not because he wants to play Apex Legends, but because EA paid him to play it. You might not know in his Twitter posts that EA paid for those Twitter posts. So uh, to me, I'm not mad at Ninja about this. I just think this is something we as content creators need to do better in general is a, like a moral standard. We need to set that moral standard. Forget legalities. We need to set moral standards to disclose when we are being sponsored. Uh, as for the amount of money Ninja got paid, I mean, he's one of those popular streamers in the world. He's talked about in the past how he makes, you know, like on a bad month, 500K. On good months, much more than 500K from his streams. So uh, he's not exactly hurting for money, and a million dollars is nice. Um, EA, you want me to stream Apex Legends? Um, in my contract negotiations, I might include bringing Apex Legends to Switch. Because Apex Legends should be on Switch. In fact, you know what, EA? You don't even have to pay me. Just tell me via contract that you're going to put Apex Legends on Switch. I'll, then I'll just stream your game to stream it. Reddit user Squid50S has put together a LEGO Nintendo Switch game case. It's actually really, really neat. He included some instructions. Uh, it's very detailed, especially when you open it up, and it's got like the, the green and black scheme going on on the inside where you put the actual carts. That actually is supposed to mimic the inside of a Nintendo Switch when you open it up, which I have done before, and it does look that way. So it's kind of neat, kind of interesting. Uh, if you would like to make it yourself, I'll put a link to the instructions and the Reddit thread down in the description. Uh, just a really cool thing that happened in the Nintendo community today. So according to some market analysts, Nintendo's board is in high-level discussions to purchase Take-Two Interactive. Take-Two Interactive is a publicly traded company that uh, obviously Sony would have to buy a massive majority share in. And uh, yeah, then they would own one of the top third-party companies in the world that includes companies like 2K, or studios I should say, like 2K, and well... We all know rock stars in that mix, right? Red Dead Redemption 2, the Grand Theft Autos of the World, L.A. Noir. Uh, this would make a massive industry shift uh, where essentially Sony would be buying out one of the studios, one of the main companies that makes some of the best games in this industry. I mean, the WWE franchise is under that banner as well. There's so many um, franchises under that banner that it's hard for me to even wrap my mind around the fact that it could become console exclusive. As a gamer... I don't like this news. If it is true, again, this is rumor, speculation right now, uh, but if this is true, uh, I don't like this for the whole of gaming because it your means are taking away a major third-party developer and making it you have to buy a PlayStation to, to get their games. Uh, for If you're a PlayStation fan, you probably love this news. You know, I kept thinking about this as a Nintendo guy. What if Nintendo bought them out, right? Like, what would I think then? And my thought process might be exactly the same. Like, it's cool. We're going to have these games exclusively, but I'd rather they not be exclusive. Like, MLB The Show, as an example, is amazing on PlayStation, but I hate that it's exclusive because there's no good baseball game anywhere else. And no, that's not on them to provide that, but it's still, it's, it's baffling to me that, like, I, if you want a good baseball game, you have to buy a PlayStation. So, uh, honestly, I don't like this news if it's true, but uh, it's a thing that happened today. And uh, we'll, we're probably waiting a long time before anything would ever become official or finalized in a deal like this. So this next story, I have to read off the page because the title is so long. So Dragon Quest XI-S, Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. <sighs> Like say that ten times fast. Uh, there's new details that have come out about the game uh, in terms of the exclusive features to Switch, and we're just going to dive into that, including some new screenshots. So here's a look at the screenshots as we talk about it. Uh, the 3D or 2D visuals that I talked about in the past, the two different perspectives you can have of this game, can be changed at any time. There are there is orchestral music for only some of the tracks, but you can turn it off entirely. Uh, party members are going to travel by your side, which wasn't there in the original game. Party members are fully voice acted during cutscenes, dialogue scenes, and battle scenes, but you can turn it off if you don't like it um additional stories which they mentioned before for, for the each party member is is there but you play as the protagonist um with those party members so each of your individual party members become the main character in those stories now i do think that's actually a really interesting thing i think that's great for dragon quest fans uh, it's unfortunate this isn't coming to everyone else who bought dragon quest it's kind of a slight to them but uh i mean selfishly as a switch owner i think it's cool again this is kind of like the last story where i kind of wish everyone just got this but uh Hey, you know what? I mean, we did have to wait an extra year or so to get this game as Switch owners, so cool. A bunch of new Yoshi's Crafted World videos have emerged, including four on a YouTube channel that I'm not really sure if they 
uh, are supposed to be releasing videos or not. And then there's an IGN First. That's right. IGN First is a, a series they do, uh, you know, every month where they get they go inside having first reveals uh, for specific video games. They haven't really done one for Nintendo games that much. And now they're doing it for Yoshi this month. And uh, it's really interesting to see some new stages. All of this stuff is early stuff, so I don't consider it to be spoiled. I mean, even even like the first boss is showing off. I don't consider this stuff to be spoiler for a Yoshi game. Um, it's just interesting to see some of the early stages. And uh, I think it's just cool. I like it. I like this a lot. I like that Yoshi's getting this kind of coverage. Uh, now, I know some of you are probably still on the fence about it because of the resolution. And all I can say about that is resolution isn't everything i know labo vr is being blasted for the same thing so i mean can we wait till we have the games in our hand i mean I, you can go play the yoshi demo i guess for yourself uh decide if the resolution is too bad for you there i don't know it's 60 fps that matters to me more than resolution i don't know why do i feel like i gotta defend this game i, I just i could see the hate coming for this game when it comes out i, I could just see it Fallout 76 has gotten a content update, Wild Appalachia, which was a planned content update, and they have several more planned content updates. Unfortunately, this doesn't make Fallout 76 a game worth playing. In fact, uh, despite the fact that prices have tanked everywhere and you can get it for a few bucks, don't get it for a few bucks. Just download Fallout Shelter. It's available on your mobile devices, your Nintendo Switches, your Xboxes, your PlayStation. It's everywhere. Fallout Shelter is a better game. Can't believe I'm saying that in 2019. But yes, a mobile Fallout game is better than Fallout 76. This next story is interesting because the source on it is ESPN. Uh, ESPN has unveiled that Call of Duty, uh, Activision and Call of Duty, are trying to get a proper esports league running, and they're going to be charging $25 million per franchise. Uh, for those who don't understand what a franchise is, a franchise is basically a team. Okay, So in the sporting world, like the Green Bay Packers are a franchise in the NFL, the Milwaukee Bucks are a franchise in the NBA, etc., etc., etc. You know, the, the Milwaukee Brewers, they're a franchise in the, the Major League Baseball. So that's the way that it's being detailed out is $25 million to become part of the official Call of Duty League. There's also apparently talks for an official Overwatch League, although pricing now, how much franchising might cost for that, is unknown at this time. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of serious Call of Duty teams considering becoming like a franchise team for their particular city. Uh, I'm not really sure how all these details are going to flesh out, um, how they're going to come up with the money. You assume that's going to be through a series of sponsorships. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's just interesting to see esports taken as seriously, uh, not quite as seriously, but coming up to the level of regular sports coverage. Uh, I think it's cool to see ESPN cover that. I think that this is the bigger news than the official uh, teams and franchising starting to be talked about. I think it's interesting that ESPN is covering this. It shows you the deep respect and the attention that esports is starting to warrant. So uh, this is good news, I guess, for coverage. Don't know if it's good news for um, Call of Duty players that are on teams, but uh, I mean, who knows? Usually, you, once you franchise and have an official league, players are paid, um, and there are prizes and all that stuff. So uh, who knows? I, I guess this is just one step further to legitimizing esports. Our final story of the day deals with the Xbox One and the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S. That is because Xbox One can officially stream games from PC through the wireless display app. There was an update released for it today, and it's actually like a remote desktop situation, so you can do other things on your PC, meaning you can do PowerPoint presentations and all that stuff if you would like to use your Xbox for that in a more professional manner. Uh, you won't be able, you may be able to watch videos on like YouTube and stuff, but you won't be able to watch videos from Netflix and services like that because those are all copyright protected. You need to use the prospective applications for that, not remote desktop into it. But still, I think this is a really, really interesting thing, and it also kind of makes the Rainway app, which has been on Xbox for a while irrelevant because Rainway was a way to stream games to the Xbox. Now, Rainway might still be relevant if it does the game streaming better, but I highly doubt that it's going to do it better than the company who owns the the uh, OS that you're using on PC and the OS that you're using on, uh, on Xbox One, which is Windows 10. I think that's going to communicate better over your home network than anything else, so uh, or your work network, or wherever you happen to be. So I think this is really, really good news. Uh, it makes a lot of sense for Microsoft. It makes the Xbox more of a platform that's basically for everything. It also marries the two platforms closer together, and it is nice for me to know that now when I sit on my 4K TV, I can play my PC games on there. I think that's really cool. In fact, 
I might try to see if I can get World of Warcraft to work. Uh, World of Warcraft, mapping it to buttons on a controller usually isn't very good. Uh, maybe I could just hook up a mouse and keyboard and, and still play it that way on my Xbox. But I think it's kind of cool imagining that I could take all my PC games and now play them on my 4K TV without needing to hook up a gaming multimedia PC. I, I just think that's brilliant. Um, I'm glad that this exists, and uh, it makes me happy. So maybe it'll make you happy too. Maybe you just don't care. I don't know. I think it's cool. So... That being said, I am Nathaniel Robogents from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you for tuning into this new episode of Prime News. Lots of changes, lots of things going on. Sorry that this didn't land at the intended time, but again, this was day one of the changeover. There's a lot of things getting pushed back because of it, but hey, it's here. It's here now. Enjoy it, and uh, you know what? I'm just going to catch every single one of you guys in the next video.